Dear students, today the topic that we are going to cover is provision for doubtful debts. Provision means an estimate. Doubtful debt means debt that can be turned bad in the future. Okay. So the bad debts or irrecoverable debts that are going to happen in the future, we do not uh, just wait and uh, see that when the actual debt would be turned bad, instead we are going to be proactive and we need to estimate the bad debts that are going to happen in the future and we need to book those, de those debts immediately. So basically provision for doubtful debt is an application of prudence concept. Prudence concept states uh, that uh, the losses that are going to happen in the future, we need to anticipate those, those expenses and we need to book them immediately. Okay. So this is the concept uh, behind provision for doubtful debt. Okay. Doubtful debt is a debt that can be turned bad in the future and we are going to estimate it. So we are going to learn all the concepts with the help of this question. It's my own question, ARD Limited with my own name. ARD Limited has the following balances in its books. Now, as you can see, there are three columns, one for 14, then for 15, then for 16. Okay, trade receivables are the customers whom we have sold goods on credit. Bad debt were written off during the year and bad debt needs to be written off. Okay, if you haven't already gone through the lesson of irrecoverable debt, so I would highly suggest that you would close this now and you must go for previous topic that is irrecoverable debt first. Okay, so if you have gone through the irrecoverable debt question, you must understand that there are two types of debts. One was bad debt were written off and one is the bad debt that needs to be written off. Now, when uh, while making bad debt account or irrecoverable account, we usually do not keep the difference or distinction between bad debts that were already written off by the examiner and the bad debt that needs to be written off uh, by us. But when, while making a provision account, we need to differentiate between these two. One were the bad debts that were already written off and one are that needs to be written off by us. Okay, so we'll be uh, looking at what is the actu actually the difference between the two in the later part of the question. Then we have provision for doubtful debt. In the first year beta, we have a doubt that 3% of the customers will not pay. In the second year, the doubt has been increased to 3.5% and, and the last year, doubt has further increased to 4.5%. Now, these are actually the requirements that are, we are going to cover here. First of all, we need to calculate increase or decrease in provision for doubtful debt. So this is the most important part. We need to understand is the doubt is increasing during the year or it is decreasing on year on year basis. Okay. So how we can calculate the increase or decrease? Let me show you with the help of some calculation. Uh, what we are doing, we need to calculate the, if the doubt is increasing or decreasing during the year. Now, in the first uh, year that we do have is 2014. 2014, we have trade receivables. How much trade receivables we do have? We have trade receivables of 100,000 that was previously also known as debtors. Now, what we need to do, we need to calculate doubt. Uh, the, uh, basically, doubt is on people who may pay or may not pay in the future, okay? If the customer has already been turned bad or they have informed us or maybe they uh, ran away without informing us that they are going to pay us or not, this means they are already a bad debt. They are already an irrecoverable debt. Now, there, are, there can be two types of bad debts. One uh, are which that are already written off by the examiner and one are the one uh, the secondly are the one that we are going to write off okay now in 2014 as you can see mr a was already written off that is 5000 and mr d needs to be written off okay so instead of uh, deducting mr a we are going to deduct only mr d why because we assume that mr a was already written off by the examiner sorry mm -hmm. the one so Mr. A was already written off by the examiner, that is 5,000. So we need to write off only Mr. D, okay? So from uh, 1 lakh, that is total trade receivable, we need to write off Mr. D, that is 4,100, okay? So why are we not deducting Mr. A? Because Mr. A was already deducted by the examiner and we are assuming that this 1 lakh uh, is the amount after deducting Mr. A's debt, okay? So it was back actually it would be 105,000 
and now after deducting Mr. A, we are left with 100,000 and what we need to do, we need to deduct Mr. D as well, that is 4,100, okay? So if we deduct Mr. D as well, so the amount that we are left with is 95,900. This means our customers still owe us how much amount? 95,900. Now the question here arise, uh, will we able to collect 100% of the amount uh, that is 95,900 and answer is actually no. Why? Because there is a doubt that 3% of the customers will not be paying us. Okay. So what we need to do, we need to apply 3% to this 95,900. If I apply 3% to 95,900, it will be 2877. Okay. It will be 2877. Now, as you can see in the first year, we have a doubt 2877. Now, this process would be repeated for the next year, that is 2015. Now, as you can see in 2015, we have trade receivables of 120,000. Okay. Now, what we need to do, first of all, we need to deduct irrecoverable debt before applying a provision for doubtful debt. But now in 2015, as you can see, uh, Mr. B is the only customer who turned bad and he was already uh, being written off. Okay, why? Because the examiner mentions bad debt were written off during the year. Okay, so we wouldn't be deducting Mr. B again. Uh, why? Because it was only deducted or, or already deducted first time. Okay. So what we need to do, we just need to apply three and a half percent to this one twenty thousand. Okay. If we uh, if we apply three and a half percent to one twenty thousand of debt, we are left with a provision of forty two hundred. Okay. So in the second year, we doubt that forty two hundred of the amount that is uh, owed by the customers will not be paid. Okay. So the same process will be repeated in the third year. As you can see in the third year, we have trade receivables of how much? We have trade receivables of 80,000. Now, first of all, we need to see, is there any debt that needs to be written off? Yes, there is a debt of Mr. E that needs to be written off. We do not need to write off Mr. C again. Why? Because we are assuming that Mr. C was already written off by the examiner. So this amount must be 82,500. And after deducting 2,500, we are left with 80,000. So what we need to do, we need to uh, deduct 3,200 as well. Okay. If we deduct 3,200 from the trade receivables for Mr. E, we are left with the amount of 76,800. Now, will the entire customers that is 76,800 will pay us? No, uh, there are four and a half percent of the customers who will uh, no longer pay because it is an estimate. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to apply four and a half percent on 76,800. So the total doubt that we do have is three, four, five, six. So, but what are we doing actually? Uh, actually, we are deducting irrecoverable debts from the trade receivable. And we are only going to deduct those debts that are not has already been deducted by the examiner previously. Okay. So after deducting the bad debts, we are going to apply the percentage of doubt. So the question in the exam is uh, asking us to calculate increase or decrease in provision. Now, how can we calculate increase or decrease? We are going to start with zero because the first year is 2014 and we are assuming there is no doubt before 2014 okay because 2014 is the first year of the business okay so as you can see there was zero doubt nil means zero and in the first year doubt has been increased till 2877 now if we uh, find the difference between zero and 2877 it will obviously be 2877 now as you can see the doubt has increased from zero to 2877 this means it is an increase in provision by 2877 now, uh, if the doubt is increasing, it is not a good news for the business. Instead, it is a bad news, okay? Because having doubts that our customers will no longer pay, so it's not something uh, to be uh, feel proud of, okay? It's something uh, uh, we can say it's uh, not good for the business, okay? It's a bad news for the business. So, uh, the increase in doubt is not a good thing. Therefore, it is an expense for the business, okay? It is an expense in the first year uh, the doubt is always increased because from zero we are going to go anywhere it would be an increase okay from zero to 2877 now in the second year as you can see we already have a doubt of 2877 at the end of the first year and in the second year that is 2015 the doubt is further increased to 4200 now this time we are going to take the difference between 2877 and 4200 and the difference is 1323 okay so if the doubt is further increasing, therefore it is also an expense. Okay. If the doubt is further increasing, it is also an expense. 
Now the third year, that is from 2015 to 2016, as you can see, the doubt is not increasing. Instead, the doubt is being decreased. Okay, if the doubt is decreasing, it is good for the business. It is a good news. So therefore, it is an income for the business. Okay, now just remember in the first year, the doubt uh, always increases. And in the second year, if the doubt is increasing further, then it is an expense. And if instead the doubt is decreasing, then it is not an expense for the business. Instead, it is an income for the business. Okay, so these were the uh, first requirement. We calculated increase or decrease in provision for doubtful debt. Now in the second year, what we need to do, second part, we need to make general entries and the ledger account. Okay, first of all, we are going to make the general entries for provision for doubtful debt. Whenever the examiner is asking for general entries, it would be the format date, particulars and debit and credit. Now, as you can see in the first year, doubt always increases. And if the doubt is increasing, it is an expense for the business. It is a bad news. So an expense is always debit in nature. So what we are going to do, we need to debit income statement account. Okay. Uh, as you may be aware that AED nature is debit from your earlier studies of double entry asset expense drawing is always debit and liability income and capital is always credit. So if there is an expense that is income statement, if there is an expense, so the nature for expense is debit. Okay. So we are going to charge it in the income statement. Income statement would be debited. Why? Because it is an expense. Now, instead of crediting any customer's account, we are going to make a new account with the name of provision for doubtful debt. Now, what is this provision for doubtful debt account, sir? Provision for doubtful debt accounts, my dear students, is a contra asset. Now, what is this thing contra asset? Contra asset is, dear students, something that reduces the value of an asset. So, sometimes I give my students the example that uh, life is very precious and life is an asset given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Life is an asset. What happens if one uh, start using drugs? Drugs are not good for life. Okay. It is basically something that reduces our lifespan. Okay. So drugs are, or smoking is basically not good for health. We all, all know it's injurious for health. Okay. So the drugs or smoking, uh, is a contra asset okay because why it is reducing the lifespan of a human being okay so similar is the case that trade receivables are our asset and what happens if there is a doubt if there is a doubt that the customer if we doubt that customers won't be uh, paying us so therefore what we need to do uh, we need to create an account with the name of provision for doubtful debt and you must remember that provision is always credit in nature Okay, so in the first year, we're making the entry income statement is going to be debited. Why? Because it is an expense. Now, instead of crediting the customer directly, uh, why we are not crediting the customer? There can be two reasons. One reason is that this 2877 doesn't belong to one customer. Instead, it belongs to all of the customers. Okay, we have applied a general percentage on all of our debtors. Secondly, we are not uh, sure or customer has not uh, yet informed us that he or she will, won't be going to pay okay so uh, instead of crediting the customers or trade receivable account uh, we need to make a separate account with the name of provision for doubtful debt because uh, there is no surety that customer won't be paid uh, maybe the customer will pay so it is basically an estimate so uh, just remember whenever we make a provision provision account is always credited now in the second year as you can see the doubt is increasing further so the entry would needs to be repeated whenever the doubt is increasing the entry would be income statement is going to debit and provision account would be going to credit okay because the nature for provision is credited but in the last year as you can see the doubt is not increasing instead the doubt is being decreased okay so what we need to do we need to reverse this entry okay so previously we need to we were uh, debiting income statement now this time we are going to credit income statement and we are going to debit the provision account okay why are we debiting the provision account because provision uh, is credit in nature okay provision is not a liability but it has a nature of a liability okay it is uh, something like liability although we do not need to pay someone this is not a liability but it is something that is 
decreasing the value of an asset okay so the pro provision is always credit in nature but if instead we need to decrease the provision account we're going to reverse it and we are going to debit the provision account and we are going to credit income statement and why is income statement being credited this time because it is an income for the business now as you may be aware lic liability income and capital credit income is always credit in nature therefore we are crediting the income statement okay so these are the general entries for provision for doubtful debt now we are also asked in this question we need to make a provision account provision account is basically a t account ledger account now as you may be aware that the nature of provision is always credit so therefore the balance brought down always comes on the credit side okay such as uh, in a liability account so in the first year is 2014 as you can see there, is, there was no doubt before 2014 okay so we do not need to write a balance brought down but if instead we have a balance brought down ball, balance brought down always comes on the credit side because the nature for a provision is credit now as you can see in the first year we made an entry income statement is going to be debited and provision account is going to be credited now uh, here we are making a provision account you may be aware that at the debit side a uh, left hand side is the debit side and the right hand side is the credit side okay so we need to make an entry income statement is going to be debited and provision account is being credited okay so we are crediting the provision account with reference to income statement we are cross referencing it with income statement now uh, you may be aware from your earlier studies that an irrecoverable debt account that is a bad debt or a debt's recovered account never has a balance brought down or carried down why because at the end of the year uh, the bad debt account or a debts recovered account is always transferred to where an income statement but all of the assets or liability account or a contra asset account always has a balance cd so what we need to do we need to balance this t account and as you may be aware the shorter side is always a balance cd okay the shorter side is always a balance cd now as you can see both of the sides are being equal these are being total that are being equal so the balance carried down is always the shorter side now this balance carried down beta would becomes a balance brought down at the start of the next period after December 14 becomes January 15. Okay. So in the second year, as you can see, we are going to repeat this entry again. Income statement is being debited and provision account is being credited. Okay. So we need to credit this provision account and the reference again would be an income statement. Okay. Now, as you can see, uh, the, we already had a provision of 2877 and now we need to increase this provision by 1323 uh, and if I add up both of these, I am left with a total provision of 4200, okay. Now, as you can see, uh, the shorter side is again a uh, debit side. In a provision account, uh, the shortest side is always debit side and the greater side will always be a credit side, okay. Now, this is balance once again. Now, this balance carried down would becomes balance brought down at the start of next period that is 2016 now in the third year as you can see the doubt is not being increased instead the doubt is being decreased okay so if the doubt was increasing we always credit the provision account but if instead the doubt is being decreased now the income statement won't be coming on the credit side instead it will be going on the debit side so the entry would be provision account would be debited and we need to cross reference it with income statement okay now we already had a provision of 4200 what we need to do we need to deduct uh, 744 from that value why because the provision is being decreased this year by 744 now if i deduct 744 from 4200 i am left with balance cd that is 3456 okay the shorter side again would be a balance bd and the bigger side would be a balance brought down we need to balance brought down it once again now the question here arise sir how long we need to uh, do balance uh, brought down uh, this depends on the requirement as you can see in the question the requirement we do have till 2016 december so what we need to do we need to make a balance bd at the start of the next accounting period okay so if we are doing the question and the requirement is for balance uh, for 2022 we are making 22 accounts so what we need to do we need to uh, make balance bd in 23 okay balance bd in 23 okay but uh, lastly as you can see in this question we need to make income statement and statement of financial position extract income statement and sofp extract income statement extract my dear students it is not an entire income statement 
instead we just need to make that part of the income statement that contain entries relating to bad and doubtful debt now as you can see we, we have three years in the question requirement is to make an income statement for three years so therefore i'm making three different columns we are going to start with gross profit okay so actually the income statement uh, uh, starts with the sales but we do not need to write sales or cost of sales here instead we are going to start with a gross profit now in these types of questions gross profit is not usually given so we are going to write x in front of gross profit okay whatever gross profit we do have we do not need to worry about it we just need to write x now in a gross profit in an income statement if you remember from your earlier studies we studied an income statement previously with a practice question ard question uh, we need to write other income okay in an other income part we need to write receive what receive it would be rent receive or commission receive or discount receive all of the receive come here and uh, there are two uh, new things that come here in other income one is decrease in provision for doubtful debt okay if the doubt is being decreased in a particular year it is an income and there can be one more income in this uh, topic and that is debts recovered okay we have already studied debts recovered that customer that failed to pay us and that was written off now came forward and gave us the amount due full or partial amount that is debts recovered now there can be another heading with the name of expense uh, so in this topic we are only concerned with two expenses one is an irrecoverable debt previously known as a bad debt and another is increase in provision for doubtful debt increase in provision for doubtful debt. okay so as you can see in first year 2014 how many bad debts are here uh, now if the bad debt was already written off or if the bad debt needs to be written off whenever we make a bad debt account so we do not need to classify or differentiate between the two we need to add both of these okay 5000 in the uh, uh, by mr a and 4100 by mr d if we add up both of these uh, we are left with a total of 9100 now you must remember from the earlier lesson of uh, irrecoverable debt the end of the year all of the irrecoverable debts need to be totaled and need to be transferred to where an income statement now as you can see in the next year that is 2015 there is only one bad debt that is mr b 3500 okay so we need to write 3500 here in the third year as you can see there are two debts one is for mr c and another one is for mr e we need to add up both of these 2500 plus 3200 so the total is 5700 okay these are irrecoverable debts then we have increase in provision or decrease in provision now we already studied in the first year the doubt always increases so we already learned how to uh, calculate increase or decrease as you can see in the first year doubt is being increased by 2877 in the first year doubt can never decrease it can only be increased okay in the second year doubt is increasing further it is also an expense but in the third year doubt is being decreased so therefore it would be regarded as an income recorded as an income okay now in the first two years we have a uh, irrecoverable debt and in the third year sorry uh, we are talking about the provision for doubtful debt in the third year the doubt is being decreased if the doubt is decreasing it won't be recorded un under expenses instead it would be recorded under other income so we need to write other income that is 744 so this is basically income statement extract so whenever we have a question in an examination uh, uh, with the name of income statement extract under this topic bad and doubtful debt so these are the only four things that we need to worry about okay lastly we have sofp statement of financial position extract that was previously known as a balance sheet but now the examiner says it uh, uh, statement of financial position is a newer uh, terminology being given by uh, international accounting standards okay so uh, as you can see there are three years here so we need to write three separate columns for 14 15 and 16 now as you may be aware that uh, the bad debts or doubtful debt basically re reduces our customers or debtors so debtors or customers are trade receivables okay so the trade receivables are obviously the asset and which type of assets are they they are current assets so in an sop extract we always need to start with when from where from current asset okay we need to write one current asset that is trade receivables 
okay we need to write trade receivables so trade receivables uh, amount that we are going to write in an sfp uh, would be the trade receivables that are after deducting bad debts trade receivables would be net of bad debts okay uh, why because we never used to write bad debts here in an sfp instead the bad debts or irrecoverable debts would always be deducted first and then we are going to write the trade receiver so we never need to show the bad debts in an sfp but the the, uh, the thing that we must show would be a provision for doubtful debt why because it is a contra asset uh, in an sfp we can write an asset or a contra asset or liability or a capital we cannot write income and expenses in a contra asset in, a, in an sfp okay so beta in the first year as you can see how much our customers owe us one lakh okay so the total amount of debt is one lakh in the first year but what we need to write we need to write a amount after bad debt okay now as you can see mr a was already written off so this means this was one of five thousand previously after writing five thousand we are left with one lakh okay so mr a was already written off but uh, the amount that we need to be written off is for Mr. D. So we need to deduct Mr. D as well. 1 lakh minus 4100. Then we are left with amount of 1 lakh minus 4100. It is 95,900. Okay. So better the amount that we are going to write would be net amount. That is after deducting bad debt. Now in the second year as you can see the customers owe us 120. And we do not need to detect this Mr. B. Why? Because Mr. B was already written off. Okay. So we are going to write 120,000 and we uh, are not going to deduct this again because it has already been deducted. Okay. We are only going to deduct those debts that has not yet been deducted. Okay. And in the third year, the receivables was 80, but Mr. C was already being written off. Uh, we need to return on Mr. E as well. So if we deduct Mr. E 3200 from this 80,000, the amount that we are left with is 76,800. Okay. Then we have a provision for doubtful debt. Now there are two ways to calculate this provision for doubtful debt in an SFP. The first and the easiest way is to apply percentage on this amount. Now, as you can see in the first year, we have a doubt of how much? 3%. So what we are going to do, we need to apply 3% to this 95,900 and this would be 2877. We also did this calculation previously. In the second year, as you can see, the doubt is 3.5%. So what we need to do, we need to apply 3.5% on 120,000 and the total amount that is doubtful of 4200. And in the third, third in the last year, we have a doubt of 4.5%. So what we need to do, we need to apply 4.5% on 76,800. Then the total amount is 3456 okay so the second way to calculate it basically there are three ways to calculate this the second way is to find this uh, is using an income statement now what will be the difference in a provision for doubtful debt being recorded in an income statement and sofp uh, my dear students income statement uh, records income and expenses for this year but an sofp records uh, the total amount of receivables okay so income statement records income and expenses for this year but an sfp records yeah, right. g so income statement beta records income and expenses for this year but the sfp records the income and exp uh, expenses till date sorry assets and liabilities till date okay now as you can see beta in the first year that is 2014 the doubt uh, has been increased by 2877 okay so if it's the first year, the total doubt will also be 2877, okay? Income statement records income for current year and SOFP had assets and liabilities at the end of the year, okay? So in the first year, if you have a doubt of 2877, the total would also be 2877. But in the second year, as you can see, the doubt was further increased by 1323. Now what happens if we add up both of these for 2014 and 15? Uh, there was already a doubt of 2877. We need to add 1323. If we add up both of these, we are left with the total doubt of 4200. Okay. Now, uh, at the end of the two years, we already have a provision of 4200. But in the third year, as you can see, the doubt was decreased by 744. So, what we can do, we need to decrease this 744 from this total amount in order to get this 3456. Okay. This was the provision for doubtful debt. 
and lastly the easiest method to uh, see how much provision would be entered in an SOFP uh, by looking at provision account. Now, as you can see, we have already made a provision account. In the first year, as you can see, the balance CD is 2877. So we are going to write all of the balance CDs in the SOFP state point of financial position. In the second year, as you can see, the balance CD is 4200. And in the third year, balance CD is 3456. Okay. So uh, but in, in an income statement, we record the doubt that is increase or decrease during the year. But in an SOFP is the total amount of provision at the end of the year. So if someone asks me that how much sir do you earn in a particular year, I can show them my income statement that you can see my income statement. This is the amount that I've earned in this particular year. But someone if asks me that how much is do you worth? Okay, uh, what is your net worth or what is your bank balance? So I can show them my statement of financial position. So this is basically the current assets that, that I have, uh, the bank balance that I do have. Okay, so if we deduct this uh, provision from the trade receivables, we are left with the net amount and this is the net amount. So these were basically the uh, concepts underlying bad and doubtful debts.